10 minute micro. Two, two. Hi everyone, welcome to another 10 minute micro. I've put together a, a slide that I haven't looked at and I'm gonna spend exactly 10 minutes and scan the slide and look at it and react to it along with you. This sample is from a local fishing pond here in Bangkok, Thailand. And what you're looking at is a root or a set of roots from a floating plant in the pond. And we're starting out with a really cool view. We've got two colothica, which are rotifers, beautiful rotifers, uh, attached to the, to the root. These colothica have four lobes up at the top. Their corona has four lobes, and each lobe is, is covered with these beautiful long hair-like cilia. And the cilia will vibrate, and that attracts uh, microorganisms and, and algae into the colotheca so it can feed. They're absolutely my, my favorite rotifer. They're beautiful. Uh, and I've been finding quite a few of them in this sample. Let's see. Maybe I can zoom in and give you a, a better look. Right now, the field of view that you're looking at is about three and a half millimeters wide by two millimeters tall. And we're using the 4X objective in my uh, inverted microscope. If I switch to my 10X, now you can get a, a much better view. This is the colotheca that was a little bit lower. And you can really kind of see some of these fine hairs attached to the, the lobes of its corona. We'll zoom back out. We're about two minutes in. And let's take a look and see what else we can find here. Here we have a free swimming rotifer. And this rotifer has an egg attached outside of its lorica, outside of its shell, if you will. Uh, and you'll probably notice a lot of these with eggs swimming through the environment as we look around. Ah, so this, these clusters are colonial paratrix. A paratrix is a, a single cell ciliate organism. And what makes it a colony? Well, take a look at the stalk. Off to the left, you'll see that it starts with one stalk and then it branches into a bunch of them. And at the end of each one, you're going to find one of these single cell paratrix. Uh, these stalks are rigid. They won't contract when these organisms kind of get scared and contract. And I can't identify the species, but you're going to see a lot of these as we, as we move through the slide. I'm sure of it. What else can we see here? That's obviously a, a very huge worm. I'm not an expert on worms. And these worms tend to really destroy a lot of the other organisms in the sample, both by eating them and by just crashing into them. What else do we see here? A, a lot more rotifers, big, big rotifers, small rotif rotifers. Uh, I saw a tiny one just fly off the, the top of the screen. By the way, I'll add arrows and a timer so you can understand what it is I'm referring to. Here's another beautiful colony of paratrix on a non-contractual stalk and a couple more. As we go down... More rotifers with eggs attached. look around just so you know when when I'm looking at a slide like this with roots it creates a lot of depth to the slide it makes it very difficult at times to keep everything in focus so you'll see that I'm kind of traveling in and out of focus this is cool so this is a great scene we have a stentor which is a single cell ciliate down toward the bottom hanging onto the root and right above it, we have a heliozoan, which is an amoeboid uh, with axopodia. With it kind of looks like hair sticking out of it, but it's it's really part of its cellular material. The stentor they can swim and they can also attach themselves. And these are known as uh, trumpet 
animacules. They kind of look like a cornet, a trumpet with a bell. They have cilia that's ringing the, the oral opening, and it creates a vortex that you can kind of see in the water. Let's zoom in, I think you get a better look. And it brings food through the vortex into the oral opening of the stentor. You can see it's twisting and giving us a look right inside the bell, right inside its oral opening. And now here, this heliosoa, boy, the axopodia, the, the, the rigid hair-like structures have taken a beating from these, uh, the uh, rotifers. They're, they're, you can see they're just crashing into it. The one on the left actually has taken less of a beating and you can see much better the, the real symmetrical sun-like axopodia that are sticking out of these heliozoans. And these axopodia are sticky. What happens is a small organism or algae will, will get stuck and then it will bring them in and absorb them and digest them. That's a, a really nice section of the slide that we just saw. Beautiful. We're down to about three and a half minutes left. Let's see what else we can find. There's another heliozoan. It, it seems like there are going to be a lot of them in this. Oh, look at that one. What's that? It looks like there's something in the, in the heliozoan. Let's take a look. See, oh, there's something alive in there, still moving. It looks like cilia beating. I don't know what that is. Let's see if we can, now we're in Brightfield. See if we can get an enlarged view. I don't know what this is. And I don't know if this is something that the heliozoan has eaten or if it's something that is eating the heliozoan from the inside. I don't know. Maybe, maybe one of the viewers can give me an idea of what this is. I don't recognize the shape. Wow. Usually by the time they're absorbed, they're, they're really not moving much anymore if, if it's something that's being eaten. Wow. All right, we'll zoom back out and keep looking. We're down to about two and a half minutes on the timer. Uh, let's see what's over here. All right, all right. So we've got... Another Colotheca, there are actually a couple of them. I think these are the original ones, but I'm going to try something. I'm going to see if we can take a look at it at a higher magnification, but using a type of lighting called phase contrast. And if we're lucky, we'll be able to see in kind of inverted colors, this beautiful hair. There we go. Look at this. So now you can see very nicely the, the lobes of the corona of the Colotheca rotifer and these beautiful hairs. And if you watch the hairs, some of them are going to be vibrating. You can see some of them kind of moving and vibrating. And that vibration is what attracts food. Something must have bumped into it and scared it. So, so here we just switched focus is a Clostarium, which is a Desmid algae. These things are great. If you look at the top tip, you see those little white things moving around, dancing around, those are barium sulfate crystals. Scientists have absolutely no idea what the purpose of these crystals are. We just know that the clostarium absorbs uh, barium out of the water column and it already contains sulfate and it creates barium sulfate crystals. And these desmids are absolutely gorgeous. Wow. You can see they're very symmetrical. There's a top half and a bottom half. And yeah, I'm, I mean, I can't get a great look because it's moving around. You can kind of see the barium sulfate crystals. But maybe let's take a, a final look at the Colotheca in Brightfield illumination. You can still get an, an idea of the hairs. And while you're looking at that, I'd like to thank you for joining us on this 10 minute micro. I really enjoy looking at these slides for the first time and reacting to them with you guys. And if you enjoy this type of thing, please consider subscribing. Leave me a comment and let me know your thoughts. And we'll be doing this again very soon. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.